what exactly is artificial intelligence? Again, I'm going to go high level here. Don't don't go telling people Josh King thinks he's an expert in AI. But here here's here's what I've picked up over the years of of observing AI. The first distinction we need to make is AI all AI is not just automation. AI automates a lot of stuff, right? But it is not accurate really to say that automation is AI. Uh, so that's one thing that I, I see people sort of mess up. Um, automations are phenomenal for sales. If you don't have a ton of automations already in your operation, you need to get on it. Get, get a Zapier.com account, my friends. It'll change your life. Um, just being able to automate basic tasks. AI takes it a bit further. Sir, sir, uh, AI uh, automates tasks, but there is um, a bit of a gray area, but there is a pretty clear distinction between a standard automation uh, something doing something automatically or on a schedule and having some sort of intelligence behind it to to decide what automation to run for example uh, being one example AI is more of and the reason it's you know it, it's been around for a while obviously chat GPT and chat GP4, uh, GPT 4 um, have uh, kicked things off on the um, uh, natural language models uh, recently but uh, the whole point of AI is not just to uh, for something to automatically click, click a button. Uh, on, on the grand scheme of things, AI is more so, okay, it can click a button, but should it? And how does it decide to click that button? And how complex is the decision to click that button to start an automation, uh, right, to schedule automation? Very, very high level, uh, very macro. There's many types of uh, methodologies behind AI and how it can be implemented. Um, and how uh, large data sets can be implemented into a very complex network and, and, and uh, a computation to achieve certain things. Here's a few here. Uh, predictive analysis and deep learning and machine learning. Um, we have text-to-speech and speech-to-text. Many of you already uh, use that on a daily basis. We have image recognition and machine vision, OCR. Um, and this is, uh, I'll also show you an example that probably every single person uh, watching this has actually uh, interacted with in the past for years, by the way. Um, but very, very interesting uh, methodology and, and implementation of AI. Um, then, obviously, we have well, we have our robotics, our uh, optimizations, our, our expert systems, but our uh, language processing, our, our natural language processing. This is the thing that's kicked start off, right? GP, uh, Chat GPT three recently has uh, kicked off. That's based off of what's called a, a, a language uh, uh, M, uh, LMN, language learning LLM, language learning model. Um, it's natural learning, so uh, that would primarily be how do I distinguish context of a conversation, um, natural conversation, not just data. So re chat, uh, chat GPT-3 reads that sentence and understands the context behind it. And it's actually a hell of a lot more complex than we think because our brains are very, very powerful machines. So they read a, the, uh, a sentence and we automatically uh, pick up all of that contextual understanding that we've learned through years and years and years of data. But how do you actually program that into a, a, a piece of code? Well, it's very, very complex. ChatGPT is a, a natural language uh, model um, and it's based off of a ton of data. Uh, and then there's also a lot of implementations that you can take from that. What I'm really interested in are primarily three things uh, on this list and how it could affect sales and business. Um, one is the natural language processing, understanding contextual conversation and and, and uh, what that whatever that looks like. A uh, speech to text and text to speech is fundamental for so many different AI, a uh, real world uh, AI implementations. How do we one? Yes, uh, we have to understand what someone is saying, but how do we format that into a uh, uh, something that that a computer can understand? It has to go to text. Right, so we have to convert that to text and, and and draw data from that, and then how do we convert that into a um, a, a real life uh, uh, data stream for a human? Well, speech is probably the best way to do that. Right, it's the most efficient. So that plays a massive part, and then image recognition, absolutely massive. And I want to jump into some implementations that this could possibly fall into, um, especially in sales and business. Um, but this is so awesome what things can do, and if trained properly. Um, you'll you'll notice that the opportunities for image recognition and generation and video generation are staggering. I'm sure many people have used you know Dolly or any of these. Uh, there was this one um, uh, that would generate profile pictures for you if you inputted like five to t ten to twenty of your actual pictures. It would like create profile pictures for you. That was uh, a few months back or something. That was all the rage. Uh, I love the idea of image and video generation, but also understanding right uh, a computer being able to look at a picture. 
uh, or a video and understand contextually what's going on with that. And that is so, so important for a lot of uh, uh, applications within the business world and sales world. And when it comes to virtual solar sales, there's some immediate applications that I can think of combining all three here or taking uh, a piece by piece that would be, are going to be very interesting that I can almost guarantee you people are, are working on right now. And within one to three years, we will see some very, very cool implementations of that in our industry, in solar sales, in virtual solar sales, okay? So um, broad scheme, very complex uh, uh, equations going on behind the background with AI um, and uh, using data sets to uh, really make those decisions as a human would. Whereas right now, if we just think automation, it's input and that input makes something do something. Whereas AI will take it a step further. So what are some ways that we've already uh, interacted with AI? So many of you might know CAPTCHA, right? CAPTCHA is if you are, uh, a website wants to confirm that you are a human, um, you'll get one of these things. Put the code in or, or click the, the, the image that, that has a bicycle, right? So CAPTCHA, completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. Um, many of you may not know though that you have to ask yourself, where is this data going? This data is actually used to train AI models. So, uh, for example, uh, image recognition. So if, if, and you can't imagine the millions and millions, probably billions of CAPTCHA uh, that have been done in the past of uh, clicking on a car or a certain object, that data, um, that, that positively reinforced data is given to an AI, and thousands and thousands of AIs to actually learn, right? Um, so this is data that has been uh, farmed from us for a very, very long time that's actually used to train AI to emulate um, using all these different components, you know, the decision that a human would make, right? So uh, we, we interact with it on a, a very, very frequent basis, uh, or at least the training of it on a very, very frequent uh, basis, but we may not know it. Many of you also may know uh, the, you know, the first real advent of AI in terms of being able to uh, do something better than a human um, it hit the chess world uh, and also the uh, the the go world um, uh, a while back uh, there was a I can't remember if it was Kasparov or someone in the 70s or 80s I can't remember um, but there was a very very famous chess player one of the best in the world if not the best in the world and uh, he went against I can't remember when this was don't don't uh, hate me for it early 2000s or late 90s or something he went around uh, to a chess bot um, and it was one of the first um, my AI history might be off here but it was one of the first AI implemented uh, chess bots and this has been going on for quite some time now and it beat him and I think one of his remarks was that you know the chess has been ruined uh, chess has been ruined because a computer has now figured out how to beat a human every single time uh, Alpha Zero now and, and many uh, 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 AIs that have been created to to play chess with chess is an extremely complex game, right? The amount of moves that are possible are just astronomical. Uh, no human could ever uh, calculate every single move. The best in the world do amazing and they can calculate pretty much every single move up to, you know, a dozen or, or two dozen, three dozen steps. Um, but when you have AI with a full contextual understanding of a chessboard, they will just just demolish the best humans in the world ever. And it, I, I heard recently on a podcast, it, it was uh, that that chess player that mentioned, "Hey, well, uh, you know, if AI can beat chess masters, then it's over. The game has been ruined." Uh, however, chess, uh, if we look online now and everything that's going on with chess, I don't know if people follow the chess world, but it's actually the most popular it's ever been ever, right? So that's sort of a bit of a, an example of how AI doesn't really ruin things. It almost makes it a bit more interesting. And, and, um, but we, we interact with AI and AI has been interacting with the, the real world for a very, very long time. It has not just been, uh, chat GPT is not the first AI that's ever been created, right? Very, very uh, compelling, um, uh, compelling implementation, but the concept of AI and complex uh, data-driven models um, and complex decision-making models have, have been around for, for quite a while. 